diamonds have been spread all over the United States, time and care have made them more valuable, and now that they have been reset in black and white by face, brother of its seven millions of people. From the beginning of his career he has been a credible witness in the court of public works to the truth of the strong language of the New Testament parable where it says, if ye have faith in the it must succeed, and shall say unto this mountain, remove and come down the place that comes from the new nothing shall be impossible unto you. As a student, schoolmaster, lawyer, teacher, organizer, thinker and writer, lecturer, educator, diplomat, and leader of men, he has made his mark on his city and state and the times in which he has lived. A man dies, but his good work lives. His ideas, ideals, and enthusiasms have inspired tens of thousands of years. A book full of the energetics of his master work and just what everyone can has been delivered under these circumstances, I visit a town or city, and try to arrive there early enough to see the postmaster, the barber, the keeper of the hotel, the principal of the schools, and the ministers of some of the churches, and then go into some of the factories and stores, and talk to the people, and get into sympathy with the local conditions of the town, and see what I what opportunities and what will it fail to be. Every town fails to do something, and then go to the lecture and talk to those people about the subjects which apply to their locality. Acres of diamonds, the idea, has continuously been precisely the same. The idea is that in this country of ours every man has the opportunity to make more of himself than he does in his own environment, with his own skill, with his own energy, and with his own friends. here in Philadelphia, he means the home city, town, or village of every reader of this book, just as he would use the name of it if delivering the lecture there, instead of doing it through the pages which follow. I'm going down the Tigris and the Frates rivers many years ago with a party of English travelers I found myself under the direction of an old Arab guy who hired up at with stories curious and weird, ancient and modern, strange and familiar. Many of them I have forgotten, and I am glad I have, but there is one I shall never forget. The old guy who's leading my camel by its torture along the banks of those ancient rivers, he told me the story of the story until I grew weary of his story and his dad I have never been irritated with that guy, but he lost his temper as I see the history. I remember that he took off his Turkish cap and swung it in a circle to get my attention. I could see it through the corner of my eye, but I determined not to look straight at him for fear he would tell another story. But although I am not a woman, I did finally look, and as soon as I did he went right and told another story. But he, I will tell you a story now with my particular friend. When he emphasized the words, I 